video, we're going to consider solving systems of non-linear equations. And we can solve these systems by either using substitution or elimination. Sometimes you have to do something a little bit clever or creative to solve the system. And I'll work through various examples for you to pick up some techniques. So first example, we have the system x squared minus y squared equals 21 and x plus y equals 7. Now the elimination method will not help us here because notice in the first equation both the variables are squared and in the second equation they're raised to the first power. So I can't do anything to cancel out the variables if I were to try to add the equations together. So that means I'm stuck using substitution. Um, let's solve for x in the second equation. You could solve for y instead, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to substitute this expression in for x into the first equation. So I'm gonna have seven minus y squared minus y squared equals 21. Then I'm gonna multiply that expression out, so I'll have 49 minus 14y minus 14y plus y squared minus y squared equals 21. And then notice y squared cancels out here, so I just have 49 minus 14y equals 21. So negative 14y is negative 28, which means y equals 2. Cool. Now I just need x, but that's pretty easy because I know x is 7 minus y, so x is going to be 7 minus 2, which is 5. So my solution set contains the ordered pair 5, 2. And we don't classify these systems as independent, dependent, consistent, or all that stuff. That was for the previous section when we studied linear systems, but in this case, just the solution set is sufficient. And we just studied conics, so the first equation you should recognize is the graph of a hyperbola, and the second one is a line. So you could try graphing them and verify that that's the solution. Okay, let's look at this next example, example B. We have 2y squared plus 3xy minus 3xy plus 6y plus 2x plus 4 is 0. Okay, what a mess. And then we have 2x minus 3y plus 4 equals 0. Well, it's going to be super difficult if I were to try to solve for x or y in the first equation, so we're not doing that. We're going to solve for either x or y in the second equation and then use substitution. So let's just solve for x since that term's positive. So I'll have 2x equals 3y minus 4, which means x equals 3 halves y minus 2. Now I'm going to substitute this in for x into the first equation, so right there and right there. So now I'm going to have 2y squared minus 3 times 3 halves y minus 2 times y plus 6y plus 2 times 3 halves y minus 2 plus 4 is 0. Okay? Not the cutest equation you've ever run into, but it is doable. Okay? So let's start distributing. We have 2y squared minus 9 halves. Well, this y, let's distribute that while we're at it too, right? We're in pre-calc now. We can do this all at once. Minus 9 halves y squared. Then this is going to be plus 6y. Then I have another plus 6y. Plus 3y minus 4 plus 4 is 0. So let's see what happens. The 4s are gone. Bam, bam. And then these are like terms. So that's going to give me a negative 5 halves y squared. And then I have 6y, 6y, 3y, so that's 15y is 0. Now, how do I solve from here? This is a quadratic equation. There's only two terms, though, so I'm just going to factor out a y. And then I have negative 5 halves y plus 15 is 0. So either y is 0 or negative 5 halves y is negative 15, which means y would equal... Let's see, negative 15 times 2 is 30 divided by 5 is 6. So I get y is either 0 or 6. Now what do I do with that? This hasn't happened before. That's because these are nonlinear. Well, I have to substitute each of these values of y in to figure out what the corresponding value of x is from right here. Okay? So for y equals 0, I'd get x is 3 halves times 0 minus 2, which would give me negative 2. And if y is 6, then I get x is 3 halves times 6 minus 2. That's going to be 18 divided by 2, which is 9, minus 2, which is 7. 
So your solution contains the ordered pairs negative 2, 0, as well as 7, 6. Okay. Let's get this over. What a thing of beauty. All right. Moving on. We have y squared minus x squared plus 4 equals 0, and then 2x squared plus 3y squared equals 6. So again, we can use substitution, or you could do elimination in this case if you wanted. So let me show you elimination just to spice things up. The first equation, I'm going to rewrite it. It is negative x squared plus y squared equals negative 4. And notice I have a 2x squared plus 3y squared equals 6. So I'm going to multiply this by 2. And now it's going to become negative 2x squared plus 2y squared equals negative 8. And then I'm going to add to it the equation below. 2x squared plus 3y squared equals 6. So if I add this together, the x squareds cancel out. And then I get 5y squared equals negative 2. Now wait a minute. Can I have y squared equaling a negative number? No, that's not possible. Not at least, I won't get a real solution. And don't worry, we're not finding complex or imaginary solutions in this case. So this, sec this problem's done. There's no real solution. So you could write the empty set. You could write a literal empty set. I've seen that before. Okay, were you disappointed? I'm so sorry. Let's do another one. 2 over x squared minus 3 over y squared plus 1 is 0. And then 6 over x squared plus 7 over y, minus 7 over y squared plus 2 equals 0. Okay, so a few different ways you can go about doing this one. We could try using um, elimination again. How about we multiply this top equation by negative 3. So then it's going to become negative 6 over x squared plus 9 over y squared minus 3 equals 0. And then I have 6 over x squared minus 7 over y squared plus 2 equals 0. So now I'm going to add them together. And then notice the 6 over x squared and negative 6 over x squared cancel out. So I'm left with 2 over y squared minus 1 equals 0 which means 2 over y squared equals 1, so y squared equals 2, so y equals plus or minus rad 2. Okay, that's good. Now I just need to figure out what x is going to be. So you can use either equation. Let's just stick with the first one. So I know 2 over x squared minus 3 over... Now y squared, regardless if it's plus or minus rad 2, it's going to be 2 plus 1 is 0. So negative 3 halves plus 1, that's negative 1 half. And then if I add it over to the other side, I'm going to get 2 over x squared equals a positive 1 half. And then cross multiplying, I get x squared equals 4. So x equals plus or minus 2. And I get this solution if y was either positive rad 2 or negative rad 2. So that means I have four solutions in total, right? Did you count them up? So x is positive 2 if y is positive rad 2, or x could be negative rad 2, I mean negative 2 if y was negative rad 2. And similarly, x could be positive 2 if y was negative rad 2, or negative 2 if y was positive rad 2. Did I get them all? Negative, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, positive. Yep, that's all of them. So let's put them in our solution set. There's four of them. I'm going to write them out separately so there's no confusion as to the number of solutions that you have. And where's the last one? Negative 2 rad 2. Nice. Okay. Good. Technically, you would be able to write plus or minus 2 and plus or minus rad 2 
since there were all four combinations. But if you only had the positives together and the negatives together or some other weird combo, if you didn't have all four possible pairings, then you couldn't do this notation. But in this case, because we had all four options as part of our solution set, that's fine. Okay, good. Last example, here we go. So we have x squared minus xy minus 2y squared is 0, and then xy plus x plus 6 equals 0. So I don't know, maybe the first thing that jumps out at you is, ooh, I want to add them together, cancel out that xy. So let's see what would happen if you did that. Let's add them together. So you would get x squared, then these would cancel, then you'd have plus x minus 2y squared plus 6 is 0. And then from there, what in the world do you do? You have two variables, that's not a good situation. So then maybe you go back to that second equation and you go, oh, well maybe I can solve for one of the variables. So I know that xy plus x would be negative six, which means xy equals negative six minus x, which means that y equals negative six minus x over x. So maybe I'll just substitute this guy in for my y. Okay, let's see what happens. We have x squared plus x minus 2 times negative 6 minus x over x squared plus 6 is 0. And then you're a brave math student, so you keep going. So you have x squared plus x minus 2 times, this is going to be 36 plus 12x plus x squared over x squared plus 6 is 0, and then you know you want to clear the fractions out, so you multiply everything by an x squared, and you realize things are getting out of control. So you have x to the 4th plus x cubed. Oh no, minus 72 minus 24x minus 2x squared plus a 6x squared is 0, and you're super duper stuck. So what's the other thing to do? Maybe something you wouldn't have noticed. Or... You factor and solve the first equation. Yes, it factored. So the first equation was x squared minus xy minus 2y squared is 0. So you can factor this, can't you? You're going to have x minus 2y times x plus y is 0. Oh my goodness. Which means that you get x in terms of y. x is either 2y or x is negative y. But this isn't bad because remember your second equation was xy plus x plus 6 is 0. So you can just substitute these values in to the other equation. So say I'm substituting in x equals 2y. Then I'd have 2y times y plus 2y plus 6 is 0. So then I'd get 2y squared plus 2y plus 6 is 0. Let's divide this by 2, so I'd get y squared plus y plus 3 is 0. That doesn't factor, so we're going to try the quadratic formula. So opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac. And right away, maybe you notice, uh-oh, the discriminant is going to be negative, which means there's no real solution. Not no real solution overall, just no real solution if x equals 2y. So that's not possible. Okay, so now I'm going to try if x equals negative y. So then I'd have negative y times y plus negative y plus 6 is 0. So then you get negative y squared minus y plus 6 is 0. Let's multiply through by a negative so it's easier to factor. So we'll have y squared plus y minus 6 is 0, which is going to give us y plus 3 times y minus 2 is 0. So then I'm left with y equals negative 3, so nice, or y equals 2. And remember, x is equal to negative y, right? So that means if y is negative 3, x is 3, and if y is 2, x is negative 2. So those are our only two solutions, 3, negative 3, and negative 2, 2. Okay, so maybe you wouldn't think to factor the first equation at first glance, right? But what happens with these problems is you'll go down some path and when you get really stuck and it looks like cruel and unusual punishment, then you think to yourself, maybe there was some trick I missed from the very beginning that would save me a lot of heartache.
Okay, so one of those tricks could be factoring and making a clever substitution. So that concludes the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and leave me feedback as to what sort of videos you'd like to see next.